need this for what we are doing today here in a little bit. So we're going to look at the equations of circles. First of all, just to make sure, here's the formal definition of a circle. I know that you know it as just a vertically round shape, but the technical definition is that it is the set of all points that are equidistant from a given point, which is called the center. Okay, so if you pick any point on the exterior of a circle, it is the exact same distance from the center of the circle. Um, whether it's the point up in the corner or the point directly to the right or the point directly at the bottom, they're all the same distance. <clears throat> so your standard form equation, when your center is at H, K, and your radius is like R, when you put it into the equation X minus H, you change the sign so that it's not always a minus sign, but it's opposite side of whatever H was. So if H was positive, it was X minus H. If it was negative, then it's going to be X plus minus H. Uh, and therefore, mod minus K. And you keep the two radius squared, which is what most people tend to forget when they keep it to the radius squared, not just the radius. Okay, so let's write a few equations when we are just straight up told the center and the radius. So if the center is at the origin, I'm going to start by writing it according to that formula, but it actually simplifies. Okay, this is hk, <clears throat> so x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to 4 squared. Well, subtracting 0 from h doesn't do anything. So this is just x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. Okay, so anytime the center is at the origin, it's just going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. So similarly, for example, B, it's at the origin. So it's x squared plus y squared. If you really want to do x minus 0, you can do that, but you need to simplify it. Is equal to the square root of 37 squared. Well, what happens when we square a square root? It goes away. They undo each other, they are inverses. Squaring the square root goes away, so that is just equal to 37. Okay, let's look at example C. The center is at 6, negative 9, and the radius is the square root of 130. So our equation is going to be x minus 6 squared plus y plus 9. The signs change squared is equal to 130 because we square the radius. <laughs> Sometimes your, your circle may be centered on an axis. For example, here in D, this is on the x-axis, and I know that because its y-coordinate is 0, so that means it's sitting on the x-axis. Um, so this would be x plus 1 squared plus y squared, because y minus 0, is equal to 144, 12 squared. So you can kind of have every combination of these. Okay? It doesn't have to be x squared plus y squared. You don't have to have something subtracted or added from both x and y. You can have kind of a combination of the two. All right, so that 
pretty simple. It's just plugging numbers into a formula. Well, uh, let's look at when we're given the formula, can we tell someone what the center and the radius are? Okay, so the first one there is in standard form. X plus 2 squared plus Y minus 7 squared is equal to 81. That's in standard form. So we just need to pick out the pieces. The center is at negative 2. You change the signs when you take it out. Negative 2, positive 7 is our center. And you have to take the square root of the other side to figure out what the radius is. So the radius here is 9. Now, B looks a little weird because that's not in standard form. So how are we supposed to figure out what the center and the radius are? Well, that's where completing the square comes into play. All right, so we need to start by grouping together the similar variables. So my x's need to be, get, need to be together, x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave myself a little space for completing the square. My y's need to be together. y squared plus 10y. Make sure you're very careful with your signs. I need to leave myself some space for completing the square. Um, constants need to go to the other side, just like with completing the square. So that's equal to positive 2. You have to move it to the other side by adding. All right, now we're going to have to complete the square twice. Okay, we're going to have to complete the square twice. So when we complete the square here with our x's, we divide negative 6 by 2, we get negative 3. We square it, so we need to add 9. Well, in an equation, if you do something to one side, you must do it to the other as well. So we've got to add the 9 to both sides. Completing the square with the y's. Divide 10 by 2, get 5. Square it, we get 25, so we add 25 to both sides. We need to factor this. Okay, we need to factor each individual piece here. So x squared minus 6x plus 9, we just completed the square. It always factors the same way. Okay, what we got when we divided by 2, we got negative 3, so it's x minus 3 squared. For the y's, it's y plus 5 because uh, 10 divided by 5, or excuse me, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 2 plus 9 plus 25 is 11 plus 25, that's 36. So the whole point of this was to identify the center and the radius. So the center is at positive 3, negative 5. And the radius is equal to 6. So that number on the right side is the radius squared. Okay, let's do another one like that. <clears throat> we need two more like that, actually. x squared plus y squared plus 16x minus 10y plus 8 is equal to 0. So let's get it set up. Group our x values together. And you may, some of you like steps, you may want to write these steps over on the side. Okay, group the like variables together. So x squared plus 16x, leave a space. Group the y's together, y squared minus 10y, leave a space, is equal to that constant, that 8 has to go to the other side, so it's negative 8. Complete the square for the x's, complete the square for the y's. 16 divided by 2 is 8, squared is 64. Don't forget to add it to the other side. Don't forget to add it to the other side. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. Don't forget to add it to the other side as well. Factor x plus 8 squared plus y minus 5 squared. Oh, let's see here. That's 89 divided by 8 plus 80, or not divided by, minus 8 plus 81. So our center is negative 8, positive 5, and our radius is 9. Okay. 
that all looks too scary right now. Okay, let's do another one that's not in standard form, but it doesn't look quite as complex as the ones we've been doing. And it's not, okay? Don't let it throw you off or make you think that something different is going to happen. It's not, okay? So we pair the x's together, x squared plus 12x, leave ourselves some space. Pair the y's together, well, there's only y squared. That's okay, okay? That just means we have less work to do. That's just y squared, okay? And we didn't have a constant to move to the other side, so it's still just equal to zero. So we only have to complete the square once for this one. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Don't forget to add it to the other side or you won't have a radius. So we've got r plus 6 squared. Where did r come from? I just said radius. That's where r came from. <clears throat> x plus 6 squared plus y squared is equal to 36. So the center is negative 6. What's our y squared? Zero. Zero. Because it was just y squared. And the radius is 6. Okay? I'm sorry, we first oh, say that again. Yes. 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 Okay. Good question, Jenna. Um, if the number on the other side of the equal sign, that constant, is not a perfect square, then yes, you would just have the square root of, of what it, whatever it is. Kind of like um, in these, in the first example, um, where we had the radius is the square root of 37, or the radius is the square root of 130. 37 and 130 were not perfect squares. So yes, you can, it is possible to have the square root of something as a radius. Yes, thank you for asking that. Okay. Um, let's keep going here for a second. We're going to take our focus off of circles for just a minute, and we're going to talk about the distance formula. I'm assuming that you've seen the distance formula before, so just in case, we're going to go over it. Okay. We are talking about the distance formula because it is somewhat related to circles, because we talked about the fact that a circle is created by a set of points that are the same distance from another point. So anyways, the distance formula actually comes from the scattering theorem. So that figure that I have sketched here on the paper uh, looks like a triangle on purpose. Okay, the distance formula didn't just fall out of the sky. Um, someone figured out that, oh, well, I think it was actually Pythagoras that came up with this because I wrote it here. Um, he also derived the distance formula. Um, but if you've got these two points, well, the distance is a straight line between those two points. Well, if we draw a right triangle and we talk about this side length and that side width, okay, we're creating um, a right triangle. We could set up the Pythagorean theorem, but the y2 minus y1 and the x2 minus x1 just comes from the fact that's how you find lengths of these sides, okay? That's how you find lengths of these sides. So, anyways. You're not actually going to have to, to come up with that, but I wanted to show you where the distance formula comes from. All right, so if we've got to find the distance between two points, okay, um, you probably find it helpful to label them. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, kind of like you did when you did slope way back then. So your distance between these two points is negative 1 minus 9 squared plus 5 minus negative 3 squared. Now the order really doesn't matter, okay? You could have labeled the first point x2, y2 and the second point x1, y1. Um, just so you keep it consistent, I'm going to do this by hand. Negative 1 minus 9 is negative 10. Squared is 100. Um, 5 minus negative 3, subtracting negative, same as adding positive, so that's 8. Squared is 164. Or 64. When you add it to 100, it's 164. That is not a perfect square, I don't think. As soon as I say that, it is. I'll find out. 164. It's not, okay? 164 is approximately 12.81.